Sports. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos, and you're watching News at 10. Well, our headlines tonight. Felder rubber smallholders also eligible for monsoon aid. Well, 681 POP to be built in Sarawak within three years. Well, the monsoon season aid or BMT of 800 ringgit for rubber smallholders announced in budget 2023 will also be extended to fell the farmers throughout the country. But Prime Minister Dr. Sri Small Sabri Yaakob said to make Felda farmers eligible for the aid, which was increased from 600 ringgit, the policy of limiting it to rubber smallholders with land holdings of up to five acres would be amended to 10 acres and below. While speaking at the Negri Sambilan Jalaja Aspirasi Kluarga Malaysia, or AKM, Village Feast program, well, he said the government understands the difficulties faced by smallholders, including those in Felda, since rubber prices have dropped and they could not tap rubber because of the rainy season. <laughs> Dutchess Reyes Malchabri also said budget 2023 was in line with the Kluarga Malaysia concept, which clearly shows that no groups are left behind. Well, he said the budget provides aid to farmers, fishermen, rubber smallholders, traders, micro, small and medium enterprises, women, youths and senior citizens without leaving out any sector. Earlier, Dato Sri Ismail Shabri spent about two hours at the Jalaja AKM program, mingling with visitors and partaking in traditional Negri Sambilan food like dugging masa lompap and masa lema chileyapi. Some 20,000 people attended the program at Sekolah Meninga Kebangsaan or SMK Palong Tujo, organized in conjunction with the three day Jalaja AKM, which began yesterday. <laughs> Keluarga Malaysia diperkenalkan untuk menunjukkan keharmonian di dalam masyarakat kita. Kita mempunyai penduduk yang berbilang kau. Kita ada Cina, kita ada kita ada Melayu, kita ada Cina, kita ada India, kita ada orang asli. Kalau kita tak mampu hidup secara aman dan harmoni, tidak ada apa yang boleh kita laksanakan. Kepala. Jadi orang Palau sangat beri well, a total of 681 fiber optic points of presence, or POP, will be built in Sarawak within three years. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tantri Anwar Musa said the initiative involving an allocation of 1 billion ringgit would benefit more than 73,000 premises, including residential houses. Context um, is uh, 681 uh, point of presence. Ada sekolah, ada bangunan, ada kawasan industri. 681 di seluruh Sarawak dengan peruntukan 1 bilion dan ini akan memberi manfaat kepada 73,548 premis uh, termasuk rumah-rumah kediaman dan uh, Dan ini menjadikan keseluruhan projek POP fasa 1 dan 2 Sarawak uh, 
yang dilaksanakan oleh kajian pusat berjumlah 1.11 bilion. While speaking in a press conference in Miri today, Tantri Anwar said the letter of acceptance or LOA for the POP construction project was given to a local company in the state on 6 October. Well, he said the effort was taken by the federal government as it understands and understood the situation where many areas in Sarawak were still in dire need of high-speed fixed broadband networks and services. And with the LOA issued, he hoped this will enable the company to offer high-speed internet packages at prices as low as 45 ringgit per month with good service quality. Comprehensive changes needed to prevent abuse of subsidies. Well, a comprehensive revamp is needed to prevent the abuse of subsidies and subsidized goods, including petrol and diesel. Well, Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs or KPD and HEP Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nanda Lingi said new procedures are needed to ensure such benefits are only enjoyed by the people of Malaysia because the government spends a large amount on subsidy allocation each year. Well, in a statement when commenting on the budget 2023, which was tabled yesterday, Dr. Sri Alexander said, similarly, new steps and procedures will be enforced to ensure subsidized goods like cooking oil and liquid petroleum gas, or LPG, reach the targeted group in such quota is not abused by traders. Well, he added that the government is committed to ensuring that basic goods such as rice, cooking oil, LPG, gas, petrol and diesel reach the hands of the rural population at reasonable prices. Well, he said the government, through the budget 2023, will also enhance promotional activities and programs to promote Malaysian goods and also elevate the economic status of local entrepreneurs by increasing Buy Malaysian Goods campaigns. Well, the budget 2023 themed Keluarga Malaysia, Makmur Bersama, saw KPD and HGP allocated with 55 billion ringgit. Well, the 1.16 billion ringgit allocation in the budget 2023 for management and development of the tourism, arts and culture sector reflected the government's continuous efforts to restore and strengthen the country's economy carried out since 2021. Well, the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, or MOTAC, described the budget as a sign of the government's continued support and commitment to make the local tourism, arts and culture industry strong again. Well, in a statement today, the ministry said the government's commitment is clearing and ensure, or rather is clear in ensuring that the national economic growth agenda continues to be given focus to empower the industry and businesses continue to be supported in this phase of recovery and growth. It said MOTAC will refine allocations that involve tourism and culture and is ready to seize available opportunities to develop the sector. Well, Finance Minister Tenku Datu Sri Zafrul Tenku Abdulaziz, when tabling budget 2023 yesterday, announced an allocation of 200 million ringgit to strengthen the recovery of the tourism sector with incentives, promotion and marketing incentives. While 90 million ringgit was also allocated as matching grants, such such as the Tourism Promotion Matching Grant, or Gamilan, which involves promotion and marketing campaigns with the industry. Well, apart from that, the government is allocating 25 million ringgit to provide incentives to the people in the form of discounts, vouchers and rebates, as well as 25 million ringgit for programs to popularize arts, culture and heritage. Well, the allocation of 15.1 billion ringgit to the Ministry of Higher Education under Budget 2023 proves the government's concern to maintain institutions of higher learning or IPTs as the best investment to build the future of students. Well, Higher Education Minister Dato Sri Dr. Noraini Ahmad said the allocation increased by 4.25% compared to 14.5 billion ringgit last year.
Well, Dr. Sri Narayani in a statement said that her ministry has received the largest amount of funds under the budget in order to ensure that the children of Kluarga, Malaysia, can continue their studies up to the tertiary level. While she said with the allocation, her office will focus on cash assistance, settlement of education and development loans, including upgrading the digital network and facilities at IPTs. The allocation will also be used to improve the Green Campus initiative in public universities as well as research and development activities. Regarding technical and vocational education and training, which is known as TVET, while she said the allocation of 6.7 billion ringgit would help the Ministry of Education achieve the target of at least 55% of post sigil Palazaran Malaysia students further their studies in the field by 2025. Well, yesterday in the tabling of Budget 2023, the government allocated 11.7 billion ringgit for operating expenses and another 3.4 billion ringgit for the development expenses of high education ministry. Budget 2023 has been described as a sincere effort to assist the people to recover from the impacts of COVID-19, especially those in the creative industry. Deputy Communications and Multimedia Minister Dato Zahidi Zal Abidin said the government is providing an allocation of 50 million ringgit for the National Film Production Fund, while 102 million ringgit is for the Digital Content Fund to drive the local creative industry and promote more productions. Explaining further, after attending a Borea Competition Appreciation Program today, Datu Zahidi said the budget demonstrated the continued support and commitment of the government to look after the local creative industry. He added that the budget also clearly showed the government has sufficient funds and hoped the people did not misunderstood and make allegations that the government has no money to provide allocation to the people. Dan kita harap rakyat uh, jangan salah sangka lah Konon lah tak, tak ada duit lah untuk membuat kira apa belanjawan tipu lah tak tipu Kerajaan mempunyai cukup wang Dan belanjawan itu mengikut kemampuan kita Non-governmental organizations or NGOs can become the eyes and ears of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission or MACC in the effort to combat corruption in the country. Well, MACC Community Education Division Director Dr. Razim Ahmad Noor said such initiatives can help the Commission in conveying anti-corruption messages comprehensively to the people, especially the youths. Elaborating further on the matter, Dato Razim said the MACC statistics show that bribery offences conducted by the younger people are currently very worrying. NGO ni mereka adalah lebih bebas dan gulungan mereka lebih besar dalam negara kita. Kan? Jadi apa yang kita harapkan mereka menjadi mata dan telinga kepada SPRM tu uh, supaya mereka jika mereka mengetahui sebarang kegiatan salah laku, salah guna kuasa dan rasuah mereka perlu uh, harus bukan harus mereka mesti melaporkan kepada SPRM. Dato Razim was met after attending an MACC anti-corruption dialogue program with 26 NGOs in conjunction with the 55th anniversary of MACC. The objectives of the program include giving knowledge and raising awareness about corruption crimes among the NGO representatives, apart from informing them about the roles and functions of MACC. Well, the proposal to close the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees or UNHCR office in Malaysia will not lead to a severance of ties with the international body. Well, Foreign Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Abdullah said the existing ties would be preserved as under international relations. UNHCR is still relevant as an international body and its expertise in managing refugees is still needed by Malaysia. 
Well, according to the minister, there is a proposal for transition for the Malaysian government to have its own card to be used by refugees and asylum seekers coming to Malaysia. He further said if the proposal can be implemented, then the UNHCR office will be closed. And this will not change Malaysia's stand in terms of humanitarian assistance for the group, even though Malaysia did not ratify the refugee convention. Jadi isunya bukan keujudan atau tiadanya pejabat UNHCR di Malaysia. Isunya ialah bagaimana kerajaan Malaysia akan menguruskan kehadiran pelarian dan asylum seekers ini dengan cara yang lebih kemas, dengan cara yang lebih sistematik. Ini tidak sama sekali merubah pendirian Malaysia dari segi peri kemanusiaan selama ini pun kita tidak meratifikasi konvensyen uh, tentang pelarian ya? tetapi kita sangat berperi kemanusiaan dan sentiasa memberi bantuan yang sebaik-baiknya Dato Sri Saifuddin, this when asked to comment on a study on the proposal by National Security Council Director General Dato Rodzi Mad Saad to close the UNHCR office in Malaysia, as reported by the media recently. NYC declares state of emergency amid rising influx of asylum seekers. Well, New York City Mayor Eric Adams declared a state of emergency on Friday in response to a record-breaking influx of asylum seekers into the city, well, mostly from the southern border of the United States. An executive order was issued on Friday to formally direct all relevant agencies in the city to coordinate their efforts to respond to the asylum seeker humanitarian crisis and construct humanitarian relief centers on a transitory basis. Well, the state of emergency shall remain in effect for 30 days and may be extended. Well, Adams also called for emergency, federal and state aid to handle the continued influx of asylum seekers, including legislation allowing asylum seekers to work, a decompression strategy at the border, a coordinated effort to move asylum seekers to other cities, emergency financial relief and immigration reform. We're issuing a clear message. The time for aid to New York is now. We need help from the federal government, help from the state of New York. New York City is doing our part, and now others must step up and join us. From our federal partners, we need legislation that will allow these asylum seekers to legally work now. Well, more than 17,000 asylum seekers, mostly from South America, have been coming in buses directly to New York City from the southern border since April. Well, Adams said New York City expects to spend at least one billion U.S. dollars by the end of this fiscal year, starting 1st October, on the migrant crisis. Well, seven people have been killed in an explosion at a petrol station in County Donegal in Ireland's northwest. While the Garda Shokana police force on Saturday said eight people had been hospitalized as the search and recovery for further fatalities continues at the site of the village of Kreeslok. Well, rescue efforts by Ireland's emergency services went on, though, through the night at the scene where on Friday afternoon an explosion had ripped through a petrol station forecourt and the facade of a nearby apartment complex where Ireland's police, fire ambulance service and Coast Guard and the air ambulance service from Northern Ireland as well as a specialist team from the UK-run province were in attendance. Latakani University Hospital, 24 kilometers from the explosion, was placed on an emergency footing. As it said in a statement, it was dealing with multiple injuries. Ireland's Premier Michael Martin said his thoughts and prayers are today with those who have lost their lives and those injured in a devastating explosion.
With the MERS 999 application system, getting emergency assistance is now easier. Save Me 999 Police connects the Malaysian public to the police. Save Me 999 Deaf for those with hearing or speech impairments. And Save Me 999 Blind for those with visual impairments. Download now for free on your smartphones. MERS 999 and applications make emergency calls easier. Budget 2023 can help realize gold in Paris 2024. Stay with us. Well, the overall allocation of 977.54 million ringgit for the Youth and Sports Ministry, or KBS in Budget 2023, can assist the ministry in the effort to realize the country's first gold medal at the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. Youth and Sports Minister Dajo Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu said the allocation for podium program from the total included 154 million ringgit for the development of sports and the continuation of the preparation program of high-performing athletes via the National Sports Council, MSN. Sebanyak 50 juta, uh, 50 juta telah diperuntukkan kepada uh, program podium dan ini memudahkan pihak MSN untuk uh, meneruskan program-program atlet berprestasi tinggi dan kita yakin momentum yang ada sekarang ni uh, saya nampak atlet-atlet ber berada di dalam landasan yang baik dan saya percaya uh, idaman kita emas pertama Olimpik itu akan tercapai uh, di dalam Olimpik di Paris insyaAllah sama-sama kita doakan well, he said the fund could also help MSN to continue the athlete preparation program to face two sports championships next year, namely the Cambodia Sea Games from the 5th to the 17th of May and the Hangzhou Asian Games in China from 23rd September to the 8th of October, as well as the qualification tournaments for Paris 2024. While speaking in a media conference after the launch of the 2022 National Sports Day today, Dr. Sri Ahmad Faisal explained that the allocation to KBS includes a proper approximately 621.10 million ringgit for operating expenditure and 356.44 million ringgit for development. Well, sport can be a part of the national agenda to highlight the spirit of patriotism and unity among the people. Communications and Multimedia Ministry or KCOM Secretary General Dato Sri Mohammed Mintek said sports can become an important stage in the government's efforts to form a harmonious and united Keluarga Malaysia. Kita dapat menggalakkan lebih ramai lagi keluarga Malaysia untuk sama-sama turun terlibat beriada di samping mereka aktif terlibat dalam pelbagai sukan yang telah pun diatur. Dan ini secara tidak langsung apabila kita sama-sama menyambut hari sukan negara secara tidak langsung kita akan dapat meningkatkan lagi hubungan antara keluarga Malaysia itu sendiri. While well, speaking after officiating the KCOM level National Sports Day 2022 today, he said apart from promoting a healthy lifestyle, sports can also become a unifying element as it crosses race, religion and culture in line with Keluarga Malaysia. He further noted that sports as a unity medium is proven as national athletes competing in a tournament or event will always get the full support of Malaysians. Well, Sabah FC returned to winning form after beating 10-man Penang FC 4-1 in their last Super League home fixture at the Lika Stadium last night. Well, the victory earned through goals from Badrul Bakhtia, Park Tae Su, Sadil Ramdani and Stuart Wilkin ensured the Rhinos continue to hold on to their second placing in the league. Well, Sabah went into the match desperate to end a four-game winless run in the league. And the Dato Ong Kim Sui coach side showed their intent from the start, although it was not until the 33rd minute that they managed to find the back of the net. While well, skipper Badrol raced unchallenged to the near post to head home and Alto Lenis cross 
from the right. Wapadang FC were then reduced to 10 men in the 42nd minute when Rafael Vitor was the last man being shown or rather was shown a red card for a late tackle on Sadil Ramdani who was through on goal. Despite the many advantages, Penang FC's Muhammad Adib Abdul Raoub stunned the home crowd when he headed home a 70th minute equaliser. But Penang's joy lasted only two minutes as Sabah restored the one goal lead when Park ghosted into the near post to head home a Sadil's free kick from the right. Well, there was no turning back for Sabah from then on as Sadil powered home a penalty kick in the 79th minute to make it 3 0 after Antana Balan was pushed from behind in the goal mouth melee. Sabah continued to push for more goal late on and Stewart added his name among the scorers when he smashed the ball into the roof of the net following a corner kick. The Rhinos will conclude the campaign with consecutive away ties starting with Sri Pahang FC on 11 October before taking on newly crowned league champions Johor Darul Tazim on 15 October. Well, Trungano FC or TFC coach Nafuzi Zain wants his team to maintain their winning momentum after defeating Malacca United FC 4-2 in the Super League at the Hang Jabat Stadium in Malacca last night. Well, Nafuzi said that with two more away matches left to go, it would certainly not be an easy task, but they must collect full points to enable the Turtles to qualify for the Asian Football Confederation or AFC Cup. Saya selalu yakin dengan tim saya. Uh, kita bermain dengan cara kita, dengan apa yang kita persembahkan dan kita tengok uh, di mana tim kita sekarang. Saya rasa insya Allah uh, kita akan layak ke AFC jika kita uh, mengekalkan konsisten dan momentum uh, apa yang kita tunjukkan sekarang ni lah. Well, in the clash at the Hang Jabat Stadium, TFC looked confident as they took a commanding 3-1 lead in the first half through Kipre Chiche's hat-trick. The striker from the Ivory Coast silenced the home fans when he scored two early goals in the third and 13 minutes, followed by his third in the 36th minute before Malacca United won a penalty kick, which was converted by Farish Shah Rosli in the 44th minute. The home side started brilliantly in the second half and managed to further reduce the goal deficit thanks to Mohamed Shami Samsudin's finish in the 52nd minute, but TFC held on before national player Mohamed Faisal Abdul Halim scored the team's fourth goal in the 70th minute. Well, that's it from us this evening. In our top story, Felder rubber small holders also eligible for monsoon aid. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. I'm Mohammed Amin Carlos. Thanks for watching. Have a pleasant night.